Hi everybody, just a quick announcement before we start this week's show and that is that we have a special guest on. He's been on once before and he was so good that we decided we absolutely had to have him back. It's Jamie Morton from My Dad Wrote a Porno. He is the star. He is the one whose dad actually wrote a porno and we're having him on partly because he's a brilliant guest and also because it's a very sad time in podcast land because the final episodes of My Dad Wrote a Porno have just gone out all apart from the very, very last one, which is coming out on the 12th of December, and it features an exclusive interview with, for the first time ever, Rocky Flintstone himself, the Banksy of Erotica, as they call him. Missed opportunity to call him the Wanksy of Erotica, but never mind. Jamie was absolutely brilliant. This was such a fun episode to record. He is so funny. We think you're going to love it. And so do check out the final My Dad Wrote a Porno episodes and all the other ones too. All right, on with the show. Hello and welcome to another episode of No Such Thing as a Fish, a weekly podcast coming to you from the QI offices in Covent Garden. My name is Dan Schreiber. I am sitting here with Andrew Hunter-Murray, James Harkin, and special guest, it's Jamie Morton. And once again, we have gathered around the microphones with our four favorite facts from the last seven days. And in no particular order, here we go. Starting with fact number one, that is Jamie. Okay, so my fact this week is, this week, I'm not on the show often, but (laughs) this week, my fact is, Barry Fitzgerald is the only actor in Oscar history to be nominated twice for the same role in the same film. Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> oh, oh, was the film an early version of Mrs. Doubtfire? Uh, best and actor was... and best actress. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, okay. no. Uh, he had one role. Oh. Uh, it was Father Fitzgibbon in 1944's Going My Way, which did win Best Picture, actually. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, he was, he was nominated for both Best Leading Actor and Best Supporting Actor. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> which is insane. It doesn't say much for the rest of the cast, does it? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, but he won for best supporting actor, mm-hmm. so he could have ah. conceivably won for both. Yes, wow. but it went to Bing Crosby, who was the lead in the film. In that, so, wait. Or co-lead, depending. Co-lead. On the, uh, yeah. <laughs> Hang on, so it won best film. It won best actor for Bing Crosby. Yes, yes. but then Fitzgerald lost best actor but he won best supporting actor yes correct. that is amazing i know what a sweep what, yeah do you have to pay entry fees for the oscars that is a great question james andy <laughs> uh, yeah um yeah you do yeah, i imagine yeah. you do i right? imagine you do you oh, have to nominate to. yourself yeah yeah you it's have probably to. an administration fee <laughs> right like yeah. 20 quid or something 20 quid yeah, probably yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but this this movie is sort of set a lot of records for example it's the first film to ever have two actors win the academy award for best actor and best supporting actor oh, interesting. Uh, it was the first movie to get the academy award for directing and writing which was by a guy called leo mccary who wrote and directed it oh, so he won two he won on two oh, at that wow. one um it was the first film to win best picture at the academy awards and the golden globes it was the first picture to win best picture and best song it has all these records wow, as the wow. first movie and no one's seen yeah. it no. i never heard of it <laughs> exactly <laughs> seems such a waste i suppose 1944 we had other things to worry yeah. about didn't we in europe well least. it's interesting you should say that because during the war all oscar statues were made of plaster instead oh. of gold or gold plated mm. bronze which is what they're actually made of mm. um so he got a a plaster oscar and he was a massive golf fan with old barry oh, Fitzgerald. He sounds great. Mm-hmm. and he was practicing his golf swing one day and he decapitated his oscar <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's a great really picture cool. of him with like the head oh, is and the body um, i was reading a bit more about this guy barry Fitzgerald. yeah oh, yeah oh, oh interesting man yeah he was childhood playmates with the siblings of okay <laughs> fine james joyce Okay, but and not James. No, they thought he was weird, didn't I they? Think he was a bit <laughs> older. Yeah, he was a bit older, and they said that he had a beard and glasses and was always reading books, and so yeah. didn't play with them. <laughs> the tracks. His name Barry Fitzgerald. Mm. It's not his real name, is it? Um, and usually you do that because you arrive into the the world of the arts and someone has your name, and so you have right. to register your name, right? And you change it. But for him, it was because he was trying to hide from the fact that he was sort of doubling on his work when he was meant to be working in the civil service. So they wouldn't, they, his name would be on the bill and they wouldn't know it was him. The worst thing was he worked in the unemployment department. So they had all of the, yeah, they had all of the lists of who was supposed to be working and who wasn't supposed to be working. So all of his mates 
would have known that he was yeah, doing yeah. this. He's a movie Sorry. star. Oh, this was it's hard was, to hide being a movie started. star. This yeah. is when he started. So I was he, in the vaudeville days. He was doing it? plays. Oh, yeah. Exactly. yeah you know. He worked in the Abbey Theatre uh, with Shaw and Yates as well. So more. Wow. Of, yeah. Ooh, what a what a milieu. I he know. Yeah. Um, yeah. He was once uh, almost kidnapped before the opening night of a play he was in. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> yeah. By his boss, who said you should be working. <laughs> so, yeah, it's called The Plough and the Stars, right? And it was quite a controversial oh, play. Yeah. And Ireland was very recently out of a civil war. You know, it was, mm-hmm. it was a febrile time. And uh, the, pl- yeah, the play had a lot of controversial stuff in it. And um, the Irish Times reported this. It was in 1926. Several gun boys turned up at Ooh. Fitzgerald's mum's house. I don't know what a gun boy is. Gun boy. Yeah. Yeah. Young gun gunman. Boy. I mean, we've got a gun man. That's the thing. Yeah, and it's like yeah, just a young okay. one of those, I guess. I think people who carry guns around between places, maybe like oh. gun runners, but young people, maybe. I don't Might know. be. Well, they, anyway, the gun boys were there yeah. at the door, <laughs> and they met his mum, and they said, "Right, we're here to take him, just keep him safe until the opening night has gone, so he won't be able to appear on stage in this play." Right. Uh, uh, okay. And she said, "Well, he doesn't live here. I, this is his mum, you know, it's, <laughs> and and I'm not telling you where he is." And so they had to go away, and then he did the play. Wow. Oh. Yeah. What polite gun boys? That's <laughs> <laughs> just because the gun boys still live at home doesn't mean that everybody's still. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. They were twelve. <laughs> They're almost like knocking. It's very okay to come out and play, please. <laughs> <laughs> uh, have any of you ever held an Oscar? No. In real life? No. Oh my god. I oh. reckon there's an anecdote coming you here. You haven't lived, so. boys. <laughs> uh, and I'll tell you something. I've held two. Uh, <gasps> yeah. Same, oh, time. Yes. same time? Same time. Oh my oh god. My I went, I was name drop hideous name drop but I was at Emma Thompson's house for dinner <laughs> she's, she's not that hideous uh, no the, the name drop she's lovely she fed me and everything uh, no but in her downstairs loo are her two Oscars wow. right there and interesting fact about Emma Thompson you might know this uh, that she's the only person in history to have won Oscars for writing and acting mm. oh, is still she? to this day wow. isn't that mental what that. yeah were they both for I mean, was the writing one Sense and Sensibility? Yes. Correct. And the acting I thought one... Jane Austen wrote that. Well, well I, I <laughs> agreed. It was a controversial year. It's like when <laughs> Kenneth Branagh won the Oscar for Macbeth or whatever he put on. <laughs> Best adapted screenplay. Literally just he used the words. He didn't actually win for... I, mean, I was going to come on to that. Interesting oh, yeah. that you mentioned Kenneth Branagh. You know, they used to be married. Emma right. Thompson. Oh, what? Branagh. Yeah. I did not know that. They used to be married and he just won an Oscar for writing Belfast at the last Oscars. And if he were to win an acting Oscar, him oh. and Emma Thompson would be the only people oh. in history to have acting and writing Oscars. Amazing, right. and, he's, and he's been nominated for two acting Oscars, so it's not beyond the realms of possibility. No. That yeah. And then yeah. that's do how that. they, we sort of parent trap them back together, right? <sighs> well, maybe not. I think she's very <laughs> happily married to Greg Wise, but you know. <laughs> uh, Jamie, do you did you take a selfie of yourself in Emma Thompson's toilet? Or... What, and what he was holding two Oscars. I oh, mean, yeah. what were you taking a selfie with? <laughs> well, I didn't, but um, my friend did. And then weirdly, later on in the evening, somehow I think we were taking pictures and like we were like saying, "Oh, airdrop me them or whatever." And Gaia, M's daughter, took his phone and found. <laughs> Honestly, mm. about 50 selfies <laughs> in this camera roll with him at the Oscars. <laughs> and she was like, oh my God, that's so embarrassing. Uh, but I didn't because, you know. Too classy. Too yeah. Classy. Don't oh, wait yeah. till you get your own. Well, I'll yeah. be waiting a while, but yeah. <laughs> there we go. Um, I'm not sure that Barry Fitzgerald should have got the Oscar for Best oh. Supporting Actor. Well, for example, there's a there's a little a little goof in this, which is that so he plays a Catholic priest in this film, mm-hmm. um, but Barry himself was Protestant, so he wasn't kind of fully aware of how priests act. And in the film, I haven't seen the film myself, but but you're going to say he didn't deserve the award, though, aren't you? Well, mm. apparently, when he does the crossing of himself, you know, yeah. he does it the wrong way, which feels like oh. as an actor you would look into Maybe the they basics. Flipped it in post. I think. Oh my god, that's he possible. He doesn't do it um, the wrong way upside down, though. He no. just does it right to left the way he should be doing it left to right, right. yeah it's, yeah yeah i think you meant to do the left to right you, you do top to bottom that's right. i go top to bottom left to right that's correct yeah so okay yeah so yeah take it back <laughs> take it back accuracy isn't everything in the arts dan it's an interpretation <laughs> do you think maybe he was making a comment on catholicism oh as in the, you know like the devil probably would do it that way yes he? yes really good call yeah. oh my god it's even deeper than i realized <laughs> do you know that it's um this is a bit of a reach guys <laughs> but uh i found this and i that's thought i'd share it uh male actors who have won or been nominated for an Oscar are statistically more likely to get divorced than their Oscarless acting peers. Oh, you know that? Mm. interesting. Because, yeah. because, because they've just got women throwing themselves at them. Well, because there's a thing called the negative consequences of positive status shifts. So basically, when you get yeah. 
a bit arrogant because yeah. you've just been nominated or won an Oscar, men mm. tend to leave their wives. <gasps> Interesting. But I think I, I, can, I can do so much better. <laughs> and then yeah, yeah. there was, I remember years ago reading a book where Dustin Hoffman, a struggling actor for years and getting bit roles and stuff, suddenly gets cast in um, The, the Graduate. Graduate. Yeah. And this line being that when he got the call, he tells his wife and they just stare at each other and there's an unspoken thing that's happening there, which is, this is the end of our marriage. Bloody hell. Yeah, because he's now what? gonna be, he's gonna be globally famous and obviously he's gonna go off and- Obviously. No, obviously. that's obviously yeah, in the room yeah, yeah. to them two. It was obvious oh, to them wow. two in that moment that that was the end of their marriage. Gosh. Yeah. To be fair, this does remind me a little bit of the time, I don't know if you, Dan and James, remember the time we won our first uh, Chortle Award. Yeah, I do oh, remember yes. that, yeah. We all split up with our partners, yeah. didn't we, immediately? Speaking of Oscars. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I keep my Chortle Award in the bathroom, actually, um, which has led to a lot of weird stains on it. But <laughs> I keep one of my awards in the bathroom as well. Dang. We won a Webby Award. One of it's... my awards? Plain? <laughs> One of many? <laughs> <laughs> They don't all fit in the cabinet. That's the problem. So <laughs> mine is next to a um, a review that I got in the Sunday <laughs> Times, which called my dad wrote a porno the quote worst cultural event of the decade. <laughs> so it's yin and yang in my bathroom. Which you know? decade was yeah, it? What, the, it was the in the Christmas edition of the Sunday Times, 2019. It was like a a roundup of the decade, wow. and some absolutely poisonous little little little, little, little toad of a journalist. <laughs> I won't name him, he knows who he is. Um, <laughs> he finds a way to worm us into any bad review he really? ever gives. This was terrible, but not as bad as my dad read a porno. So he'll be thrilled that we're ending. Um, yes, I, I thought it's important to kind of have them both to realise that neither really matter, do they? Mm. Oh, yeah. that's very good. That's like um, Rudyard Kipling, isn't it? If, the triumph mm. and the disaster, mm. and you know, you treat them both the same. It's, and it's exactly like that, Andy. Wow. Yeah. I'm often called <laughs> <Kipling>. <laughs> <laughs> Um, if you go on IMDB, they have lots of sort of tagging that you can do and people just go and do it. It's not like an official thing, but um, there's loads of different tags and each movie might have 20 different tags. Uh, someone went through them to see if there's any correlation between these tags and whether you can win an Oscar or not. Uh, and the apparently the, there are some keywords that have never been even nominated for an Oscar. So zombie, food fight and breast implant. <laughs> There has never been a movie wow. with any of those three things that has ever been nominated for an Oscar. Interesting. I don't think that's true. It's the tagging, so it could be that someone oh, okay. hasn't tagged. Okay, because I'm pretty sure that Hook has a fantastic food fight. Oh, and was that nominated for Best Picture? <laughs> Absolutely not, but it must have been nominated for something, like production design or yeah, song or I guess something. So. Okay. You're saying that my screenplay, my <laughs> double D undead custard brawl... <laughs> It's not <laughs> probably not Oscar worthy. Damn it! A uh, Chortle oh, award though. A Chortle. Yeah. <laughs> Can I just quickly ask? In my double D undead custard <laughs> brawl, <laughs> brawl. Sorry. Um, is it the simply the breasts that are undead? <laughs> yes. It is. It's about a woman who goes in for a, a routine uh, operation, a, a, a breast enlargement, and um, she gets given the breasts of a dead person. Ah yes, yeah, and it's and they come to life, and they come to, but still attached to her, and she's alive. Still attached to her, she's wow, alive. that's weird. You rarely have a zombie attached to a human who's alive. We don't have a woman on this podcast where we normally do, but um, is that how breast implants work? They just take the breasts off another person yeah, yeah, yeah. and stick them onto you. Is yeah. that right? I believe, I believe so. I, I do need to do. The screenplay is still in the research phase. Uh, Russell Crowe has an Oscar, Not doesn't Oscar. he? Russell Crowe. Russell Crowe has, has one he? for Gladiator. Yeah, he's got a few. He had he's back got to a back. best actor. No, yeah. he's the only one once. Do you about. know where he keeps his um, Oscar? He doesn't keep them in his bathroom. Like, oh, oh okay. Uh, I haven't been to his house and <laughs> taken selfies. Where I he should keeps say. his Oscar. Okay. Um, what's the most Russell Crowe place to keep an Oscar? Like his barn or something. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you um, are no, so close. No, it's, oh, really? It's, yeah. It is it, it's, uh, in his oh, chariot. Oh, 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 I bet he has the chariot yeah, from Gladiator. Chariot. And no. He's got um, in a haystack. He's like it's a needle in a haystack, and he <laughs> oh, keeps it in his haystack. It's like it's, it's sort that's of metaphor. Good. It's like your thing. Yes. Though, you know, has like... he got a Colosseum? Did he take that home as a prop? <laughs> <laughs> he has a chicken coop, and he keeps it in his chicken coop oh, oh. Uh, at his ranch, and he claims that it helps his hens to lay bigger eggs. Wow. I mean, but he all the, can that all he wants. <laughs> all the cockerels sadly leave the chickens. That's the problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Rosamund Pike 
buries her rewards in the garden. What? Right. Yeah. So bloody, what? She's so, so weird. She's so isn't bloody it? goth, Rosamund Pike. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, she's kind of cool. Like, she's all classy and la la la. But actually, there's a, there's a heart of darkness. Why she, she like leaves it? a little bit of the top of them to kind of glint in the sun? That's what? nice. Yeah, I know. It's it's kind of interesting, isn't it? And what awards has she won? She's won like a Golden Globe. Okay, but she hasn't got a chortle. Because she hasn't got a chortle. I mean, right. you can't sacrilege to bury a chortle in the garden. <laughs> They'll come and dig it up and take it off you. It's not allowed. Stop the podcast. Stop the podcast. Hi, everybody. Just wanted to let you know we are sponsored this week by ExpressVPN. Absolutely. ExpressVPN. It's just one tap of a button and all your network data is encrypted and rerouted for ultimate privacy. That is right. It's an app. It prevents your phone carrier from being able to see the sites that you visit and sell that information to third parties. So it kind of shields your web browsing. VPN stands for Virtual Private Network and it protects all of your network data so you can stay private even when using your favourite apps like Shazam. Shazam, indeed. <laughs> Do you use Shazam? I don't want my Shazams being sold. I don't want anyone to know what I'm Shazamming when I'm out and about. So if you get ExpressVPN, no one else will know. And the very exciting thing is that you can get three months extra free because you listen to No Such Things a Fish. And the way you do that is you visit expressvpn.com slash fish. That's E-X-P-R-E-S-S-V-P-N dot C-O-M forward slash F-I-S-H. That's right. Just go to expressvpn.com slash fish and you'll get, as James says, that extra three months for free. Okay, on with the podcast. On with the show. Okay, it is time for fact number two, and that is my fact. My fact this week is that one of the attractions at Disneyland in 1956 was The Bathroom of Tomorrow, which included, amongst (laughs) other exciting exhibits, an array of interactive faucets and a dramatic story of valves. Wow. Not valves. Yeah. What a narrative. What a narrative. (laughs) Gripping. (laughs) Any Oscars in this bathroom? Oh, God, there should be, right? Except, the well, there's not, but the whole thing is kind of one big Oscar because it's gold, the entire thing. Oh, my God. So the idea was in the 50s, they thought, in the future, everyone will have a gold bathroom. I think so, (laughs) basically. And sadly, only Donald Trump has managed to make that dream a reality. Yeah. Yeah. So this was part of an area of Disneyland that was opened along with the original Disneyland in America uh, called Tomorrowland and Tomorrowland was going to have lots of exhibits where they could showcase how the world was going to look in the futuristic future of 1986 and it included things like this bathroom of tomorrow whereby air conditioning was going to be in there there were dumbbells so that you could do exercise while you're having a bath that were on the side of the bath you know all these sorts of like little innovations but the whole premise of it it was done by a company called the crane company they were selling it now so the bathroom of tomorrow was actually today Uh, and um, yeah and so so this was one of many of these little exhibitions that were put on that were slightly sponsored by corporations who wanted to showcase their related stuff yeah. uh, within this area of Disney. Yeah. Very cool. It was designed by Henry Dreyfus, um, who was a designer. Uh, Dreyfus also designed the classic black telephone. You know, this yeah. this one that you basically yeah. see everywhere. He also invented most of the Hoover models of vacuum cleaners, the upright ones. Uh, and he was also the chair of the meeting of the International Organization of Standards Committee uh, in Berlin when they kind of came up with all the different signs that there would be around the world. You know, like if you go to an airport, the yeah. sign for a taxi rank is the same everywhere. Yeah, he right. was the head I of that. I love that oh, kind of amazing. stuff. I love yeah, those yeah. shadowy organizations that, you know, <laughs> secretly <laughs> <laughs> secretly or dealing with signs and I did a, I went on a mad research bender last year for QI about um uh, uh plug plug sockets and uh, oh, the yeah. inter- standardization of plug sockets oh, yeah 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 and are we gonna hear hear about it now <laughs> I think for everyone's benefit <laughs> <laughs> that would be the worst cultural events of the 2020s if we did that <laughs> I had such an amazing time oh, doing God. the research and I look back and I've written about 20 paragraphs of just <laughs> dross <laughs> on, <laughs> so yeah um, this bathroom does have some good things in it uh, it had a sink which you can adjust the height of you just sort of pull it up or That's down clever yeah. accessible accessible and uh and if you know for kids they can pull it right down and you know it's, it's there and it was hydraulic powered i think that's uh oh, that's cool it's a good idea yeah i mean it's clearly a huge pain in the bum to install but you know <laughs> it's the, but once it's in it's in, once it's yeah, in yeah. exactly you know yeah never think about it again yeah and is it still there no it shut down after no. a couple of years yeah it 
surprisingly, right. was not as exciting for kids uh, as, they, <laughs> as they probably thought Well, it Disney was. isn't just for kids, Dan. It's also mm, for adults. Absolutely, absolutely true. Because, wow. yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I, I have worked for Disney parks and resorts for... Have you? N- like, more than 15 years. Doing I, what? I, 15 I years? direct a lot of stuff. Are you there. in the mouse suit? No, you're not. <laughs> there is no mouse suit, James. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Um, yes, yeah, so I have been to the parks a lot. <laughs> really? Wait, 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 but there is a suit, right? As in, no, he's mm-hmm. saying it's just Mickey. It's, it's just, just new, Mickey. It's just a <laughs> new rodent man running around. <laughs> Genetically modified <laughs> mouse so man. one Mickey Mouse. Oh. That's cool. Um, yeah, there. it is cool. So I have been there a lot, actually. And have you then got access? We've spoken in the past on the podcast about all these like crazy corridors that you can go. And, yeah, like, the tunnels underneath Walt Disney You've World. done all that? Yeah, I've been in those tunnels. <gasps> they are called, what are they called? They're called the Utilidors. Oh, yeah. All of yeah. these tunnels. And you know, they're actually not a basement. People think they're the basement, but because it's built in Florida and it's essentially on a swamp, you can't have basements in Florida. Oh. Okay. So it's all. Oh. So everything else is on the first floor. Exactly. Magic no. Kingdom's oh on the God. first floor. What? Yeah. That's so funny. And if you walk up to Magic Kingdom, it's on a very, very subtle slope oh, so, so you're actually climbing up a full flight of stairs as you approach magic kingdom that's incredible oh, that is incredible yeah wow but those tunnels are mad and there's everything in there there's like <laughs> coffee shops there's like what dry cleaners that yeah it's amazing for the staff exclusively for the staff yeah wow and it's good to kind of get people mm. through the park so that like no character or cast member from one part of the park will ever be seen in a different part of the park, they'll just go through the through the. I tunnels. imagine like a race of troglodytes <laughs> who live under there and have never come to the first floor. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's a, that. Ironically, would be a great movie. But yeah. it's one that Disney will never make. No. <laughs> <laughs> From the maker of Double D Undead Custard Brawl <laughs> comes. Uh, um, this uh, just quickly on Tomorrowland before oh, yeah. we go to, mm. to Broad Disney. It does sound absolutely bananas because all of it was sponsored by one company or another and there were very, so the house of the future itself was actually sponsored by uh, Monsanto who later became extremely controversial as one of the makers of Agent Orange which was used in oh, Vietnam oh really right. Right. yeah so Disney kind of dropped that sponsorship once yeah, that sort of quite. you know came out but all of these different firms so American Dairy Association American Motors National Lead Paint who sound great <laughs> wow um, <laughs> so very much of an era aren't they very, <laughs> very mid 20th century um, the Dutch Boy Colour Gallery was co- sponsored by Dutch Boy Paint Wow. wow. Can't find much more information about them. <laughs> Friends with the gun boys. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, um, um, and when they opened it, they didn't cut a ribbon, did they? They just turned some taps on <laughs> instead of. Yes, yeah, that's like, right. Oh, really? Yeah. Because yeah. it was the, the house of the just future. Just to show that it's the future. Wow. Yeah. You know, oh, what's amazing. more the past than cutting a ribbon? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was told by someone that I work with over there that this is, an, this is insane, this fact. Okay. <laughs> And I'm not sure if I believe it, but he told me, and, I, and he's very... And he works there. Yeah, quite senior. Though. Where, though? Is he one of the troglodytes? Has he gone nuts? <laughs> Has he not him. seen Sun in 10 years? <laughs> let's just call him Mr. Mickey M. No, uh, M Mouse. Uh, the boss. Um, no, 4% of all the photographs taken in the United States are taken at either Disneyland or Walt Disney World. Stop it. Four percent. Four percent. That's a lot. Isn't that insane? it's quite a big country, isn't it? Yeah. The United States of America. Four percent is, that's, that's mega. That's crazy. It's mad, right? Yeah, it doesn't, It. you're right to be sceptical. <laughs> yeah. <isn't> it, <laughs> I was like, is that true? But, wow, amazing. Um, and you know, they also, it isn't just theme parks, they have cruise ships. Mm. Disney. Right. Have you been on a Disney cruise? I have. Oh my god, okay, I've got so many questions to ask you, right? Oh, okay. <laughs> no, 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 this is amazing. Wow, I've never seen you so animated. Yeah, this is, this is Not you. since we started talking about plugs that time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I was reading an article called Disney Cruise Secrets. Oh yeah. Right? Okay. And um, I have to say, it was the most disappointing article I've ever read. <laughs> okay, let me just, I'm just going to tell you a few of the secrets, right? The yep. Disney Cruise Ooh. Secrets. Okay. okay, secret number one. Disney Cruise state rooms are not ready until 1.30 p.m. <laughs> Ah. <laughs> secret. <laughs> secret number- Wait, how's that a secret? <laughs> I know. It's only a secret if someone rocks up at 12.30 yeah, and, exactly. say, and they say, yes, it's ready. <laughs> <laughs> secret number five. You can bring bottled water on board. Ah. Secret. <laughs> um, secret number 14. Disney will provide you with soap. <laughs> oh, the soap's so good on the cruises. Is it? It's oh. some of the best soap you've ever had in your entire life. I may have taken it with me. 
It's really good. Really? Okay, yeah. so that does that actually, is a secret. That is a secret. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so can you confirm about the rooms are not being ready until <laughs> no, one? Day? I actually can confirm that because you. <laughs> here's the thing with. <laughs> here's the thing, right? With those ships is that you have to get off them really early because they have a they're they're oh, changed yeah. over the same day. Yeah, yeah. So everyone's gonna be off the ship by like nine or something. So How to, long are you on it for? Is it a few there are days? Multiple, or? You can have you can do two nights. You can do four nights. Dan, you can do a week. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm now a travel agent, uh, but uh, so yeah, I guess the turnaround so is that the they line. yeah. So until right one thirty, yeah, yeah. that gives them time to clean all the all the, all the state rooms. God, that must be a chaotic four and a half hours on board, just what? finding yeah, out what's left, know, left in all the rooms. I and, mean, you know, that happens in every hotel in hotel. the world. <laughs> I mean, it must yeah. be absolute mayhem every day. <laughs> <laughs> but what's fascinating about the Disney Cruise Line is yeah. that they're the only cruise line on the planet that has fireworks at sea. Okay. So, oh, okay. Yeah, so they have a big deck party, normally on the penultimate night, and they have fireworks that are set off from the ship. Huh. And what's fascinating about these fireworks is that um, they are made from a biodegradable material so that when they hit the water, they become fish food. Oh, no! that's cool. What? Isn't that cool? Yeah. That is really cool. Because yeah, is it is it? Do you need special dispensation for fireworks at sea? I don't. I, I think you probably like do. You yeah. Be able to. Yeah. Because it, like, it might be seen as a signal. It might look like flares, yeah. right? Flares, yeah, An yeah, SOS. Kind of yeah. 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 Oh, wow, they're going very whimsical with their yeah, they're very <laughs> extravagant <laughs> flares. Uh, wow, well, they're sinking, but they also want to let us know that Goofy is having a great time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then, well, uh, I, <laughs> I was once on one of these ships, and they have these rides on board the ship. It's like a slide that goes off the edge. Actually, okay. you know this one that is like kind of you stand on like a trap door, and it and it opens, and, oh. it goes, and you go, go down a chute and stuff. I got all the way up to the top, stood on the trap door. <laughs> yeah. And I was too heavy. But oh. instead of saying, I'm oh. sorry, sir, you're too heavy, they said, I'm so sorry, buddy. You're just too full of magic today. <laughs> <laughs> too full, full of, magic. of magic. I mean, I could see what they were going for, but it was even more annoying. I was like, just call me a fat bastard, to be honest. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> so I had to walk all the way down <laughs> in front of all the children and their parents. And what you said to each one, too full of magic. Yeah. Too yeah, full of magic. Too, I'm so yeah. sorry. And I was like, I, I forgot something in my room. <laughs> sorry. I couldn't get into 1.30. It's no one. <laughs> it, was, it was a low point on what was otherwise a beautiful trip. <laughs> Okay, it is time for fact number three, and that is Andy. My fact is that 5% of the world's electricity is spent turning big rocks into small rocks. Jesus mad. That is mad. It's, it's a lot. Such a large it is amount. 5%. Of it, 5%. That is crazy. For something that sounds unbelievably dull. I know, but this is this is big. This is a big business. Yeah. So what exactly is it? Because I'm. St I mean, I tried to research this topic. I <laughs> failed. I'm not going to lie. Okay. I will be a passenger for this part <laughs> of the podcast. Andy, educate me. I found this in an interview. I was reading an interview with a guy called John Stanton, who specialises in crushing big rocks into small rocks. That's his. <laughs> that's, his that's his line of work. That's and his gig. He yeah, loves it. He's a big rock crusher. And basically, when you're mining, you might get some big rocks out of the ground, right. but the ore is is inside those, and you can't just you can't just deal with the big rock you've got. You need to turn it into a small rock. Right. Yeah. That, you need a rock crushing machine. Yeah. And there are lots of great there are lots of great models available on the market. Yeah. Can I ask when yeah, you yeah. say he's a big rock crusher, is he a big as in like big in the industry rock crusher, or is it specifically he's a big rock crusher? I think it's both of those. Yeah. It, it works right. on the two levels that. It does, yeah. Wow. yeah, yeah, cool. yeah. I don't know how big he is as a man as well. It could work on three levels. Ooh. I don't know I don't know. How much magic it does he got? <laughs> <laughs> I saw that piece in the Times. He's he's got he's got as much magic as me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> wow. And it's called uh, yeah. comminution, isn't it? Yeah. Turning big rocks into to little rocks oh man and then you screen them and then you might grind them smaller again grinding, and, uh, and yeah crushing right? grinding do you know what's better wet grinding or dry grinding mm. oh my god I actually they're do, both done i do know oh, i've do got you? an instinct no of course i don't <laughs> <laughs> uh, i would feel like wh when you say better yeah Grinding mills can be operated both dry and wet, <laughs> according to the Encyclopedia Britannica. Okay. Uh, Let's go wet. Uh, yeah, and wet grinding is predominant. Yeah. 
Wow. So what is wet grind that you just oh, add? Damn. Give me you a break. Like <laughs> <laughs> Literally read it directly from the Encyclopedia Britannica. You add water to the, yeah. to the crusher. And I, yeah, I just wonder why it why it helps. I guess it's... Um, Lubricates. Yeah, lubrication. Yeah. Mm. Um, and it helps with like the dust probably. Absolutely. Like when you cut into Absolutely. flagstones and things... Yeah. So it helps have a bit of water to kind of. That's look at where do you come from? I'm sorry, guys, I've arrived. What can I say? Um, yeah, but most of them are like massive nutcrackers, basically. Yeah. You just they're they're all top loaded because then the pressure from the rocks above acts on the rocks that you're trying to crush down, and so they've got, they're being forced into you know oh, two different directions. Right. Um, and you just feed the rock in, and the rock cracks, and because the metal surfaces are harder than the rock. That's you know that's the process, yeah, yeah. and then um, eventually when it's small enough, it's a dust, and you can get the lithium out or the yeah, exactly. whatever right. yeah, yeah. The gold. So hang on, so you're using big rocks as your tool to crush the former big rock into smaller rock. It's helping. That's it's so a, cool. It's a partner. Yeah. There is actually a thing called autogenous uh, milling, uh, where <laughs> <laughs> it's literally just the rocks that you're crushing are all crushing each other. That's, oh, that's so, so cool. Clever. That's incredible. Yeah. I love that. I was reading about the history of. Crushing rocks, mm. big to small, and uh, <laughs> one of us had to. <laughs> uh, I, I just want to give a shout out to the website machinerypartner.com. Okay. Because, uh, and I'm quoting directly here, it's an event in 1881 when Philetus W. Gates got a U.S. patent for his device, which was the, that was the sort of uh, rock crusher. You know, that was, the, that mm. was the basic model. Philetus, not a name you hear often these days, is it? No. As a first name. Yeah, Phil Gates. <laughs> uh, in 1883 Mr. Blake challenged Mr. Gates to crush nine cubic yards of stone in a contest to see which crusher would finish the job faster the Gates crusher completed the task 40 minutes sooner I was looking into humans who can crush rocks oh that's good thinking because I thought oh, before we had good. the machines we must have needed humans <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah, yeah. Um, and then I thought you know can anyone do it with their bare hands and I actually found uh, the first non-Roman emperor Maximinus Thrax who oh. was uh, who was supposedly a rock crusher? The first non-Roman emperor. Yeah, as in he wasn't born in he the wasn't, Roman Empire. Yeah, but he was. Sorry, but he was emperor of Rome. Of Rome. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. exactly. Oh. Yeah, um, and he he's a person who was very tall, but because he was quite a lot taller than most people, the exaggerations have been written down, and it's uh, hard to yeah. know where he was. So supposedly, and this was a Roman emperor, he was. Eight feet six inches tall. Right? Yeah. No. Yeah. So, wow. Wow. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Apparently, his um, his thumb was so large that he wore his wife's bracelet as a ring on it. And that's how. Oh, wow. That's he how was good at hitchhiking. That guy. <laughs> 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 um, and so during public events, he used to impress people by picking up rocks and crushing them with his bare hands and pulling wagons on his own. Wow. Which, yeah. Um, it feels a bit demeaning for the Emperor of Rome to be having to do, like, hey! <laughs> He had a very short tenure. It was three years as emperor um, because he was overthrown because of his disastrous... Um, Bloody hell. Yeah. How? ...idea on war. Uh, just by some people, some other people. Yeah, just that's very impressive that they managed to overthrow... <laughs> well, I mean, it's not just him <laughs> fighting against everyone. Like, okay, he's not yeah. like, let's do a thumb war. <laughs> 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 yeah. Anyone can beat me in a thumb oh, war. No. I will hand over... <laughs> Oh god, yeah, when he's telling the gladiators whether or not they've survived or not, there's no mistake in that. It's like a foam hand at a basketball match. So this was a really interesting topic for me. Yeah. Um, so uh, I have decided to go a little off-piste and discuss The Rock. Uh, did you know that The Rock's nickname as a kid was Dewey? I bet you Dewey. didn't. No. Dewey. Dewey. Yeah, like, as in covered in dew. <laughs> yes, exactly. And that's the reason why. Um, do you know that he has a degree in criminology? Did not I know bet that. none of you knew no, that. No, He's an no, ordained no, minister, guys. He's an ordained... Okay, that's yeah, more understandable. Yeah, that's that makes yeah. sense. Um, on Dewey, is it like Huey, Dewey and Louie kind of thing? Do we know mm. why? Or is it the Dewey decimal system? He spent all his time <laughs> in the library as a kid. I'm going to be honest. These are bullet points. <laughs> uh, I, I haven't really delved deep into it. Okay, All right. Do you guys know what the smallest rock is? Here we go. <laughs> Back to business. Back to proper rocks, boys. Well, okay. So, well, what is a rock? You know, is a speck of dust a rock? No. Oh. It's not. Is a pebble a rock? Yes, I think it is. Yeah. Okay. Is it grit? Is it oh. something smaller than grit? Uh, you guys oh. are never. You can, Talc. You, you're never going to get it. Talc seems pretty small. Yeah. Yeah. It's clay. Clay. 
Clay. Clay. Oh my God. Clay. 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 Sorry, I just, I'm Clay. You're so expected and excited. I I'm, I'm going to have to really sell this puppy. Clay. Okay. No, this is really interesting. Genuinely, this, is, you, you, this sounds so boring, and I appreciate that. <laughs> you, you don't need to keep saying that. Everything in this segment follows that trend. So, which is smaller, sand or clay? We now know it's clay. Clay. It's clay. Yeah. clay. <laughs> but you might not have thought that, right? No, like no. A particle no, of clay. Actually, yeah. No. Like sand feels so fine. Like, you've, mm. you know, that very fine Caribbean sand, it feels yeah. so fine. Okay. So clay particles are unbelievably tiny, the smallest what ones. What is they clay? Be... Small rocks. It's a sort yeah, of okay. little <laughs> silica. I think, it's a, okay, like a, yeah. I think it's a silicate. Okay. Um, but yeah, you only you never feel it as like sand. Exactly, it doesn't yeah, fall through your fingers. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Right. But uh, I think you've got clay soils and stuff like that. And mm. there it is in granular form. So particles of clay can be less than 0.002 millimeters across. I think that's two wow. microns, possibly. Yeah. It's okay. unbelievably small. So the largest particle of clay you can get is not even a thousandth as big as the smallest particle of sand right. in the world. <gasps> Oh, that that's okay. incredible. That's the scale of difference we're talking about. Wow. I told you. I, I take it all you. back. <laughs> <laughs> and, and this is the really weird thing. Clay particles can be so small. I'm quoting directly from a, a, site, a site I read here. Clay particles can be so small that it could take hundreds of years for them to settle from the top to the bottom of a bottle of water. <laughs> what? what? Because it just takes... Everything gets in their way. Everything. You know, the tiny molecule yeah, of anything yeah. just disrupts the clay from its path. And um, and this is why clay soil is so sticky. It's mm. because there are so many spaces in between these tiny, tiny particles. The water fits in between the particles. So oh, it just okay. holds huge amounts of water. That's why clay soil is so heavy. Has thick. someone actually done that experiment? No, we invented plastic 100 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that's, if they started then, they would have, they would have watched no, it no, hit no, the no. bottom. I'm afraid, I'm afraid, I don't think anyone's done that experiment properly, but it just needs, it's sort of, yeah, yeah. And, and also, we're actually banning plastic. Guys, yeah, so. we don't want to encourage that, do we? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, <laughs> um, I found a mystery rock. Oh. It's a mystery rock that grows baby rocks. <laughs> and it it's very bizarre um so and it's only found so far as we know in one place in the world or at least so far as the article claims uh and this okay. is in romania and it's in a town called costesti and these are called trovant rocks t-r-o-v-a-n-t if you saw the rock one day and it's raining overnight or whatever and you come back the next day suddenly the rock has grown it's got like a bulbous new bit of rock that's on top of it. Why? And they basically secrete cement and harden. So um, what happens is during rain, during a heavy shower, they absorb the rain minerals and then they come into contact with chemicals that are inside the rock, which then create a pressure reaction, which pushes out this kind of concrete. And sometimes they become so bulbous that they loosen and they fall off. And that's the baby rock that's created next to the rock. Other times they just stick like that giant pimples coming it out of like them. It feels like we could utilize it to build things, like build a bridge. You put one of these rocks yeah. and then you fire a hose at it just and then shape it. Up. Yes, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> I think it's true. <laughs> and and some, are, some are tiny. They can be really, really tiny or 15 feet high, these rocks. So when the bulbous bits are secreted, high. they're like giant it's rocks. It's yeah. really two Roman emperors. <laughs> <laughs> Ridiculous. <laughs> Yeah, like, wow. and, and you just get it in this one spot in the world, so far as we know. Wow. That is so oh, interesting. That's really cool. Yeah. But did you know that The Rock has a tattoo that took 60 hours to do? So, you know. What is it of? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Stop the podcast. Stop the podcast. Hi, Andrew. Did you know that very recently a single computer chip transmitted a record 1.84 petabits of data per second that was enough for 250 million photographs to be sent in that time? That's unbelievable. I didn't know that. That's the short answer. I had no idea. <laughs> Well, the reason I knew about it is because I read it in New Scientist, which is one of my favourite magazines. It's so geeky. It's full of amazing articles written by experts. You can be sure of its accuracy. And it's on all sorts of subjects from archaeology to human behaviour to medical advances to sending millions and millions and millions of photos. <laughs> it, it really is amazing. We, we all read New Scientist, whether it's environmental challenges, whether it's artificial intelligence, whether it's new technology... 
all the world is basically made of science, so this is your chance to understand it. Why not? Absolutely, and for the No Such Thing as a Fish audience, they have extended their Black Friday sale. So prices start at just £49.50, and to get those kind of deals, you can go to newscientist.com forward slash Christmas fish. That is absolutely right. Go to newscientist.com slash Christmas fish and you'll be able to find out what package is right for you, whether it's the website, the app, the print version of the magazine, or all three together, all options are available. Okay, Andy, I've got 230 million photographs about my latest game of golf to show you, so we should go on with the podcast. <laughs> oh, God, on with the show. Okay, it is time for our final fact of the show, and that is James. Okay, my fact this week is that one of the biggest TV events of 1966 involved someone reading extracts from a book written by a relative known as Rocky Flintstone. What? <laughs> <laughs> this is an outrage. This, this is insane, is, James. This is I, an accusation of plagiarism. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Against my father. Uh, <laughs> this is astonishing, I have yeah, to say. Yeah. I've never heard this. So I was just reading the old newspaper archives and I searched for Rocky Flintstone because I thought maybe there was someone with that actual name who lived in the past and I couldn't find anyone like that but there was a big spike of mentions in 1966 and that was when the final episode of the Flintstones aired uh, and you can still watch this today online it's an episode where Fred finds an old diary of his grandfather Rocky Flintstone uh, his name was Rock Bottom Flintstone, but he was nicknamed Rocky. <laughs> That's an even better name for my dad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and it was about a run-in with some Stone Age Nazis and a romantic escape with a character called Mata Harrock, like who's based on Mata Hari, the spy. Mm. Uh, so there's a little bit of romance in there as well. Do you know what? That makes some sort of sense because my dad... <laughs> my dad recently tried to trademark Rocky Flintstone oh. because he's an idiot and he thinks <laughs> that that's going to be able to be done and he got a letter back from Warner Brothers basically saying oh, absolutely not really? under no circumstances wow. and actually you're lucky that we're not suing you for wow. using it up until this point but Gosh. you know what the, the, the parallels here go a bit further than just the name being the same so my dad wrote a porno is ending now um, it is. after six seasons because we're being sued by the Flintstones yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the final episode of My Dad Wrote a Porno is going to feature for the first time Rocky Flintstone himself so that it's the correct. first ever mm. appearance of Rocky Flintstone someone's read the press release that's yeah. <laughs> so Flintstones this episode where Rocky Flintstone appears for the first time is the final episode of season six <gasps> that's of the Flintstones weird yeah so it's the exact same scenario as you that's so this is so do, did you what? have any idea that your dad... I mean, has your dad seen this episode of The Flintstones? Has he, has no. Did, did you sort of see it and then forget all about it and then years later... No, because no, he would have been... I think it's no. just an awesome name it's and a just, coincidence, yeah. isn't it? It must well, be. Uh, he was he named himself the Rocky after a dog in Brazil, which we don't need to go into. <laughs> okay. But the Flintstone bit was because he really relates to you know in the title sequence yeah. Yeah. when he gets locked out of the house and he yeah, like yeah. bangs on the door. Yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, well, apparently that's yeah, that's oh. very much, well, that is very much like my, my parents. Um, so I think that that's where he was inspired that's from. Cool. But oh. that is mad that Rocky yeah. Flintstone is actually a character and the. The grandfather of Fred, you said. Yeah, yes. that's right. Yeah. yeah, so one generation difference, wow. but, but close enough. And I watched a bit of the episode. In it, it's going from Fred reading out loud to his wife and Barney, his friends. So it's a similar thing. Extracts of the diary out loud while they then cut yeah, to the spooky. scenes itself. I think there's the... something of Alice in Wilma as well, isn't there? Would you not say? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Redhead? Yeah. I mean, I'm not sure how I feel about this. It kind of makes me think my whole career has been a lie. <laughs> <laughs> but Incredible. obviously the Flintstone was massive in the 60s yeah. it was absolutely yeah. enormous yeah. and so the end of the Flintstones was watched by I don't know how many people I couldn't they didn't have the actual figures but it was like 30 percent of the of wow. the TV watching wow period. yeah and, and it was the, it was the end of the original series because obviously it's yes. gone on and on and so on but oh, um, we're going to talk about the Flintstones movies later on oh, don't you worry I bloody hope so <laughs> <laughs> iconic bits of cinema <laughs> okay. um, but the Flintstones the cartoon I didn't realize was also originally aimed at adults just as much as children yeah broadcast yeah. late in late Prime Time evening. show, 8.30 p.m. Yeah. And I really like the fact it was originally called the Flagstones and then the Gladstones yeah. and then the Flintstones. They yeah. finally hit on that as a 
because those two both sound so weird. Yeah. Can't, can't really call the Flagstones. Have you, have, have, you, have you seen the pilot of the Flagstones? No. No. I, I actually watched it. Oh, really? All ninety seconds of it. <laughs> ninety seconds. Uh, of it. And it was it was good. It's amazing that it got picked up. Are you are you saying it is good or is no? It is good. It is good. It's, yeah, it, yeah. Is, it, it, it is good. But it it, it it doesn't have the magic of the Flagstones. Was it the same right. characters as well? Yeah. Okay. Right. Um, yeah, but it was it was made in 1959, but never aired until 1994 mm. when it was discovered. Okay, right. Yeah. When it was, you should watch it. It's interesting. 1994 to see. is the year that the Flintstones movie came out. No. Oh yeah. My God. So anyway, there's um, in the <laughs> original series. One of the things that to appeal to adults as well that they did, I'm pushing on, is um, they would have celebrity guests that would come on or they would parody celebrities of the day mm. Mm. Uh, in order to give some comic, as you would say, uh, for the adult sort of recognition. So um, quick quiz, because they loved a pun. They absolutely uh, yeah. loved a pun. Oh, yeah. Okay, Cary Grant is a character. What has he been renamed? Ooh. Clay Grant. Oh, oh nice. that's good. Yeah, that's good. Um, Cary Granite. Yes, 1-0. Uh, Tony Curtis, who voiced himself, is on. What is he called? Um, Boney Curtis, because they were in the... That's good. Yeah. yeah. No. Close. You're in the right area of the name. Oh. Stony Curtis. Stony oh, Curtis. Oh, that was obvious. <laughs> that was easy. Sorry. Yeah, keep going. Yeah, there are yeah. more of these. Yeah. Um, there's uh, Rock Hudson. Uh, Played himself. <laughs> <laughs> Amazingly, yeah. Uh, it's Rock Hudstone. Uh, oh, my God. <laughs> And and Halle Berry in the movie The Flintstones. I don't mm. know if you're keen to oh, talk yeah. about that. She was actually <laughs> directly named after a famous female celebrity. Halle Beryl. Uh, no, so no, oh, so you got to step away from Halle's name altogether. Shaley Berry. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> what? Halite Berry. <laughs> No, her name has nothing to do with it. Oh, right, it's okay. another famous actress. So you got the character's name. Yeah, the character's name. Famous actress. Famous yeah, actress, named sorry, after another okay. famous actress. Charlize Theron. <laughs> <laughs> no, so there's no pun. It's just outright her name. Oh, oh. oh, oh, oh. Sharon Stone. Yep, there oh, we go. Oh, yeah. And she's called Sharon Stone in the in the movie. Yeah, Halle Berry's called Sharon Stone in oh, the that's movie. Clever. Oh, yeah. that's great. But that's enough on the movie. Let's get back <laughs> to the <laughs> TV series. Well, just lots of. I really find it interesting that the sort of adult elements of it because I did not I, I never watched The Flintstones really I, mm. uh, oh, really uh, yeah just not very familiar young. with it I guess so but it's they 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 uh, were sponsored by cigarettes in the original days which Winston mm. Andy how many times <laughs> do I have to tell you <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Anyway, they were sponsored by this firm, Winston Cigarettes. <laughs> was that when it was going out to children? It feels like that yeah. was when it was. Yeah, 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 yeah. Even yeah. then, it was. Well, good. yeah, because advertising was just different back then. They were right, advertising yeah, yeah. to adults. They weren't. They weren't kids yeah. smoking. Um, have you seen that as well? I, I actually watched I have, that. Yeah. It isn't the smoking that got me. It's the outrageous misogyny of those two men. Oh really? Uh, really? It is insane. Like <laughs> Barney and Fred are just like watching their wives do loads of chores and mm. housework, and then they're like. Let's go around the back and they sneak off and they just like <laughs> are like reclining and just smoking and just chatting and watching their wives work. Right. They are cavemen, but it is literally. Still... <laughs> <laughs> um, there's um, a theory that the Flintstones are from the future, uh, which I quite like. What? That's um, the Jetsons. <laughs> well, they do meet the Jetsons at one stage, ah, don't they? So that's they? What, that's part of the theory. Okay. Um, one theory is because they have four fingers. Um, obviously we have five fingers in this time so perhaps the little finger has sort of vestigially disappeared because you don't need it anymore because mm. you know what do you use your little finger for you're right and we never had four fingers so that has exactly. to be an evolution yeah. Yeah. and they <laughs> the animals in the flintstones can speak obviously these days animals can't speak and never in the past as far as we know have animals been able to speak yeah so perhaps in the future they it's, will be able to speak humans coexisting with dinosaurs never happened, never happened. in the past so jurassic park it's a, is well, it a the, sequel to jurassic park <laughs> the flintstones <laughs> There is a, um, oh, yeah, the, it's pretty cool. The theory is that it's a post-apocalyptic future yeah. where all current technology has collapsed mm. and they're trying to replicate it using the uh, mutant dinosaurs that they've got <laughs> well, access to. My theory is that they listened to this podcast and rocks became so popular because of the last <laughs> section that we just did away with all of the technology and people lived in a rock-based society. Yeah, I'd live there. I'd move. <laughs> wow. Did you guys see the Flintstones kids just say no holiday special? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I missed that one. This was something that went out in 1988, and it was a public service say no to drugs Flintstones uh, yeah. episode. Brilliant. Oh, man. Can I tell you the 
the plot? Yes, yeah. please. Okay. So the Flintstones kids, it's like young young Flintstones. This is Bam Bam and Pebbles. Pebbles. So, no, it's not. It's actually the main generation we know, but like kind the of Muppet as young babies. people. Oh. Like, exactly. Oh, like fun. the Muppet okay. babies. Yeah. Nice. Um, they're trying to win tickets to a Michael Jackson concert. Who in this is called? Michael Jackstone. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, and Wilma is tempted to join up with a gang of older kids whose leader, Stoney, smokes... Crack. Marijuana, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> You're right, they should have should gone have with crack. crack. Um, and then Wilma talks to her parents and they tell her that a real friend wouldn't offer you drugs. No. And Stoney is arrested for drug usage. And it ends with a version of Michael Jack Stone's song, Beat It. And the episode also features Nancy Reagan as herself. Does she have a funny name? No name. I, think, I think she might have been doing a kind of extra, like, hi, everybody, oh, yeah. you know, rather than oh, Nancy, okay. Reagan. Nancy Reagan. Nancy Reagan. No, Nancy that's Reagan. Yeah, that is a really hard. That's probably why she never made it onto the. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, can we talk a little bit about the movies? Yes. Oh, go on. Then. Oh my God. Yes. Right. Okay. Well, this is kind of tangential. It's not really about the movies, even though it is. Um, the B fifty twos. Oh yeah. But the, uh, oh yes. The band. Yes. Love they, Shack. Of Love Shack fame. Yeah. Um, what a tune. They recorded versions of Meet the Flintstones and the Bedrock Twitch. Which yeah, I'm sure you've I bought got, you've that record. Twitched. Uh, did you? Yeah, the B the B fifty twos. Oh, they they changed their name. That's yes. the thing. They changed their name to the BC fifty two. Very oh, cool. Brilliant. So Very cool. cool. And they even appeared on the top forty chart as the BC fifty two. Oh, really? oh, that's, that's committing brilliant. to the bit. That's great, yeah, isn't it? Everyone yeah, got on board. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, I, yeah. Gig. Oh, yeah. I really want to see both the Flintstones film and the Flintstones film sequel, Viva Rock Vegas. Yeah, yeah. Um, They're both which, great. Are they, so you've seen both? Of course. Yeah. I just mentioned to my wife that we were recording this. She's I've seen that. Halle Berry tries to have sex with John Goodman in the film, and it's oh, yeah, really? it's quite it's there's quite a sort of um, saucy plot where John Goodman is Fred Flintstone because mm-hmm. he's incredibly eminent as an actor now, and seeing him in 1994 yeah. playing Fred Flintstone is very funny. <laughs> but he looks so like Fred yeah. Flintstone. He does look yeah, like it's amazing. Cats have to say yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Is from, it not a good film? Uh, it's it's quite it, like it was, a cult film. It was commercially successful. Uh, but afterwards, the entire cast refused to return for the sequel, which yeah. is why the prequel, Viva Rock Vegas, uh, was recast entirely. Nobody the same. Yeah, because uh, yeah, yeah. the first Flintstones movie is Elizabeth Taylor's last ever film. Oh, yes. no, which yeah. is oh, really terrible. The casting is amazing. What a way yeah. to go out. It's got oh, Rick, that's Rick Moranis. Rick Moranis. It's got yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Elizabeth Taylor. <laughs> they clearly thought they had something. <laughs> One thing I read was that Rick Moranis basically quit acting after this movie because they realized that he they peaked. were using him. <laughs> it peaked. How do you, how do you <laughs> that? Can't follow yeah. it up. Yeah. Yeah. I personally, I think I'd read that he had, he had family issues, which meant he had okay. to step back oh, from okay. acting. But the thing claims that he was just like, I can't be put in any more movies like this. Rick this is- Moran is like a moraine is like a it's like scree that you get on top of a mountain oh, that's brilliant very, very nice good, that is absolutely cool because rock moranus <laughs> was right there <laughs> <laughs> But uh, you don't God. settle for the easy joke. He, no? <laughs> he needs the puns you need explaining for. <laughs> yeah. That's his pun. Oh, glass was banned from the entire set of the Flintstones. What's it? Any guesses why? No glass in the future. <laughs> <laughs> in the future, there's no glass. That's correct. <laughs> was it that though? Because I know that in um, is it in Downton Abbey? You're not allowed to wear Calvin Klein underwear because even though it's not on show, they think maybe your sackcloth or whatever it is they wear <laughs> might ride up and they might see it. Sorry, your sackcloth? I haven't seen it's, Dancing it's, Abbey. It's, it's, do you think it's set like in the 14th century with peasants and is things? Is it? No. It's no. not, it's oh, not. Okay. But you it's can, see, abbey, you can right? see there are lots of... It's I an abbey. That. I thought it was about monks. <laughs> <laughs> There are lots of probably quite sheer and slinky gowns and outfits. Yeah, so maybe you've, if you're you've wearing got a, you can't wear modern underwear basically, right. even that, though it's not going to be on show. Wow, that is it of, similar? It's not that. Oh. No, glass band from set. I think Jamie, Jamie, you're the only one who hasn't uh, slung it again. <laughs> James has got quite a good one. Dan's no glass in the future. So <laughs> uh, there's a wide range of plausibility. I've forgotten again that we talk about the Flintstones. The Flintstones yeah. movie. Movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Were they worried that because there was so much rock on set? No shoes. No one's wearing shoes. Uh, oh, no one's wearing uh, shoes. The entire cast are filming barefoot. That's clever. And so oh, really. Kind of any glass on set. Oh, yeah, oh, good. Well done, Dad. That is good. That's pretty good. 
There was uh, the actor in the original series, Miss Jean van der Ply, uh, or Pill, P-Y-L is her surname, and she was the voice of Wilma. And um, uh, she gave an interview in 1995 where she explained that they were basically, for the amazing amount of money that this this made, because it was syndicated around the world, I mean, there was just so much money being made, she only received $250 an episode. Oh, and wow. then she did a contract that said the residual payments from syndication, she did a one-off payment of fifteen thousand dollars and that was it that she got and she was a great voice she did a lot of voices in the jetsons as well and she did i think as well as doing wilma she did pebbles in that she was she was she was rosie in the jetsons rosie she she was she was the um the maid yeah yeah Yeah. it's so incredible um oh that's awful yeah and so yeah she said if i got residuals i wouldn't be living in sam clement i'd own sam clement um Mm. oh yeah so well, she should have a better agent, frankly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Only blame yourself. <laughs> Okay, that's it. That's all of our facts. Thank you so much for listening. If you'd like to get in contact with any of us about the things that we have said on this podcast, you can find us all on our Twitter accounts. I'm on at Schreiberland, Andy. At Andrew Hunter M. James. At James Harkin. And Jamie. At Uncle Igor. Don't ask. Okay. It's the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, or you can get us on our group account, which is at No Such Thing, or our website, No Such Thing as a Fish.com. Check out all of our previous episodes. They are up there now. You can also buy the new merch that we've released it's a bunch of t-shirts and pin badges and so on and also you can get access to clubfish the private member club jamie uh you can listen to the final episodes of my dad wrote a porno which are going out in december these are the final episodes one including jamie's dad rocky flintstone for the first time ever no one's ever heard his voice before well you have done i well, i know your dad but yeah uh <laughs> but, but, and it's a good voice so i'm very excited to hear it um but uh on behalf of the podcasting world we're very sad to see you guys go Thanks. so no, we're now delighted well <laughs> say, i mean financially you've outlived us all right fine <laughs> fish live on forever don't they <laughs> anyway we're gonna miss you guys um, Uh, But uh, we hope to see you coming back for reunions. Anyway, that's it. That's all of our facts. We'll be back again next week with another episode. We'll see you then. Goodbye. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my God, I just broke it. (laughs) What's that? (laughs) I didn't see there was one behind it. Oh my god. Are they Jared. both short? <laughs> oh. oh no. You know when like people win awards like, I wish I could break it in half <laughs> and give it to the other nominees. I'm really cool sorry. Dan's I was done that. my golf swing earlier. <laughs> <laughs>